Hi, my name is Suzanne Nelson, and I'm the second bassoonist in the Boston Symphony. I started my job in the year 2000, and I was formerly in the Montreal Symphony before that. I grew up on a pig farm, and I was surrounded by music. My parents were opera singers, and we just heard music all the time. My older sister plays flute, and I wanted to play flute, and I asked her if I could play flute, and she said no, so I had to pick another instrument, and I picked trumpet. I went up to the trumpet professor at the university where I lived and asked him if I could study with him, and he said, you know, you look like a bassoon player. And I thought, what does a bassoon player look like? I was always tall and kind of gangly, so I assumed that tall people, I don't know. Um, apparently, not a lot of girls play bassoon, so I'm counting on you girls to pick the bassoon. It is the undisputed best instrument in the orchestra, I have to tell you. Um, so I looked in the encyclopedia in a book way back then, in the 1900s. I looked in a book and there was a picture of a bassoon and the picture was about that big. And it's a beautiful instrument, but I didn't know how big it was. Like it could have been this big, it could have been this big, whatever. So my first lesson was basically getting the case, which is right here, and seeing this beautiful four part piece of wood and trying to put it together. This is the boot joint. I don't know why it's called the boot joint. It does have a name. This is called the wing joint, and that is because it's got a little bit of a wing to it. So that goes second. The third joint. This is called the long joint, but it is no longer the long joint because at a certain point, bassoon manufacturers cut all the, all the lengths of the joints the same length. So they could fit in a smaller case, basically maybe to facilitate going into a, an airplane. I don't really know. And it is called the gentleman's cut. Gentle person's cut, shall we say. This is the bell. So this is kind of a bell, but honestly only one note comes out of the bell. So it's kind of a badly named joint. Okay, so that's almost done. One of the most important parts of the bassoon is this thing. It's called a bocal. And it's kind of like the bow for a string player because if it's a bad vocal, you, you kind of are fighting a, a losing battle. If it's a really good vocal, you tend to sound a lot better. Um, they're not cheap, kind of like bows. Like the more you spend, you tend to have a better vocal. So that's the bassoon. The most important part, double reed. It is not exactly like the clarinet reed. The clarinet reed is only one. The bassoon reed and the oboe reed, English horn and, and contra bassoon reeds are called double reeds. It's because two pieces of cane are placed upon each other and they vibrate together. The sound of the reed when you blow on it is called the crow. I don't know why it's called a crow. Kind of sounds like a crow maybe. And the reason why it's so important is because if you don't have a reed, plug your ears, So with the reed, it's a lot better, I would think. Bassoons don't tend to take too much care if you take care of it. If you drop it, it's probably not a good thing. You might wanna try and play it, and if there are certain keys that um, are hard to move, if they're stuck, or if they're bent. Don't fix it at home, I can tell you from personal experience. Take it to your teacher, and even if your teacher can't fix it, they will take it to a, a repair person because um, if you do it wrong, you can make it worse. Um, I swab my, re or swab my bassoon after I play, every time I play, um, because we make a lot of condensation and that tends to collect in the one side of the bassoon. And if you don't clean it out, it could go into the holes and sort of um, make the pads moldy or gross, just generally gross. Or it could make the bassoon smell, and you really don't want that because you're breathing into it. Um, that's pretty much it. I actually polished my bassoon quite recently. I don't know if you can tell, but I, I should have left one joint not polished, but it, it looks like a brand new bassoon as far as I'm concerned. It's very nice. Um, a little bit more about the bassoon though. Um, the bassoon has four keys on the right hand and nine keys on the left hand, and we have to cover all these holes. So our thumbs are very busy. Um, 
I'm a little accident prone and I tend to like when I'm making salads or whatever, I cut myself and you, you should be a little bit more careful than I am just as a cautionary tale. Um, yeah, we also have names of some of our pads on the, or keys on the bassoon. This key right here is called the pancake key. Looks like a pancake. This one is also, it can be square. And when it's square, apparently they call it the waffle key. Also, little tidbit. This key right here is called the whisper key. So you can amaze your friends with all this knowledge. These keys right here are called the flick keys. And they tend to be, you tend to use them a bit more when you're a little bit more advanced. Um, and like you could be, do you, do you flick? Some people say, do you flick a key? It's kind of stupid, but you can amaze your friends if you know that jargon, it's good. When I practice, I use this. This is my best friend. It's called a tuner and a metronome. And my, when I first started bassoon, these used to be in two different machines. So this was a wonderful addition to technology. Um, so they're both in one. They don't, they're not that expensive. Um, they're going constantly when I'm practicing. Um, and I think that kind of aids in your internal pulse and it helps you sort of feel and be able to keep the tempo all the time. Um, I would say for beginners and, and maybe intermediate that you could take 15 minute intervals to practice. Don't try and practice an hour because even I can't practice an hour at a time without getting a little distracted. There's so many things to distract you. And if I can also encourage you, leave your phone downstairs or in another room because that is like the worst distractor of all time. If you have your metronome on the phone, not a great idea. I would, I would again, encourage you, metronome. Um, be present. If you find yourself, your brain wandering, take a break. Do a lap around your room or just go up and down some stairs or whatever and then come back to it where your brain is more fresh. Um, be kind to yourself. Talk to yourself nicely. Um, reaffirm that what you're doing takes time and don't rush it. You're not going to be perfect on the first day. Um, you're not even going to be perfect in the first 10 years. I'm telling you, we are constantly battling those things in our head. And if we can at least be nice to ourselves, have that little guy on your shoulder, the nice guy, kick the bad guy off, put the nice guy on your shoulder and have them, or girl, talk to you and, and encourage you to keep doing what you're doing because you can do it. If you put your mind to it, you can do anything you want. Even play the bassoon, the best instrument in the orchestra. <laughs> When you're about to go into rehearsal, I suggest you bring your instrument, and in your case, if you can, take a pencil. I also encourage my students to write on their music because if you have to remember all the things that the conductor tells you, you're gonna forget them, especially if you have more than one piece that you're playing. So I, and I also write encouraging things like happy faces and much to the chagrin of my colleagues, but I do write things on my parts um, that Kind of when I come up to them again, it makes me smile, it makes me feel good. Um, I put hearts and all that stuff. Um, pencil is good, don't do it in pen because you wanna be able to erase it. I also bring, in the, in the Boston Symphony, I tend to sit in front of the trumpet section. Um, now actually in quarantine, uh, I'm playing in front of the trombones, which is nice, it's different. But I have a set of earplugs with me because it can get kind of loud. Um, and basically during rests, I put them in my ears. I have, I sometimes even just put them in the cup of your ear. I don't put them in really far and it does kind of help the <laughs> ringing in your ear after. Love the trumpets, don't get me wrong. Love them and love the trombones. And I actually love where I sit because it's kind of in the middle of heaven. I've got the winds around me and I've got the brass behind me and it's fantastic. Um, so do that also. Bring your ears and bring respect for your teacher because I know sometimes you get bored. As a bassoonist, band music isn't the best and most interesting. So if you can find ways to listen to what the teacher says and maybe bring a little bit more to your line. Or what I used to do is I used to um, ask the teacher if you can play the flute part or the clarinet part or the bass clarinet part because they tend to have better parts um, and maybe have them transcribe them for you to bass clef unless you're really talented and can read those clefs without having to write it down, which I'm not. Um, the teacher has got a really hard job trying to keep 10, 20, 30 kids engaged. And if you can help them out in any way, I'm sure they will be forever grateful. One more thing, 
back in the old days, in the 1900s, um, we had to bring our parts with us, like paper, 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 and we couldn't, we weren't allowed to bring them home for uh, fear that we would lose them, and invariably, somebody lost them, so they weren't allowed to be taken home. Nowadays, you guys have your phones, and you can take a picture of your part, bring it home with you, and practice it. And I'm not saying practice it an hour a day, just practice 10 minutes a day on that part. We'll really make it um, sort of, you won't have to think about it as much, and you can really take part in listening to other people around you and engage that way. It'll make a better concert. Also, I was thinking, if you and the whole band are engaged and not really making a lot of noise whenever, you're going to have a lot more fun because you're going to be able to get through a lot more music. Just my thoughts. Bassoons will never play princesses or fairies or or angels or beautiful things. We tend to play just slow moving kind of beasts. And I love that, I love it. We tend to be also the comedic, you know, if there's something funny that needs to be said, you know, they'll, they'll throw in one of these with the bassoon. Or something like that. I love that, it's, my, it's where I live, I love it. Um, I'm gonna play uh, excerpt for the bassoons. Excerpt means something that is kind of made famous by a bassoon. Um, like a flute wouldn't play this excerpt. Okay, and hopefully you will know what I'm playing. It is the grandfather from Peter and the Wolf. Note, old. He's probably a big guy, too. Um, another excerpt that we play, and maybe you know this, too. I hope you do. It's kind of cool. What's cool about it is all four bassoons in the orchestra play it at the same time. So it's kind of like a rock, rock music for us. And that was made famous in Fantasia, if you recall. Um, Mickey Mouse was a sorcerer's apprentice and he made a big mess of things. And that piece was going, it's called Sorcerer's Apprentice by Paul Duca, very good bassoon part. Um, I'm gonna play some melodies for you. You can yell it at the screen when you know it. And I know you're gonna know it even before I play the melody, but here we go. That's one, here's another one. That melody is, you're probably gonna say Darth Vader. Yes, it's Darth Vader. And you know who wrote that music? John Williams wrote that music. Um, he writes a lot of music, a lot of beautiful music, and Boston Pops tends to play all of that beautiful music. I am very fortunate to play it. Um, he is a master at melodies, and he can, I'm gonna play two notes for you, and you're gonna to totally know what it is. That's two notes. It's Jaws, of course. And I only know of one other composer that uh, you can sort of recognize his music by two notes. Ready? I'm gonna play this for you. You, put your, you can yell it at the screen. Right? I hope you know it. It's like the first one, two, three, four. four notes of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. I'm gonna play one more melody from John Williams' music. Um, and the bassoon actually does play this. So off you go, pick bassoon, because it's the best instrument in the orchestra. Um, but even if you don't pick an, an instrument, 
or if you don't like an instrument, go to another instrument. There are so many musical instruments to play and have fun with. And when I was going through to school, um, you know, you'd go through hard times or whatever. And quite often I would take this bassoon, not this one, but my bassoon into my room and I would just play long tones and just sit there. It's kind of like a meditative type thing. As I got older, it became a nice big cup of coffee and go in the room and just play long tones. And by long tones, I mean something like this. And then you just do it through the whole instrument. Um, it's kind of meditative. I love it. You will find friends, and if you're not a sporty type, music is the best way to go. I was both, and I was lucky to have both you know, team sports and music, but you can really make friends for life if you go into music. I guarantee it. Mm -hmm.